And here's another example of how to calculate the frequency heard of a source when, in this case, the source is moving away from the observer. So we're going to do several of these examples. Here's just one of them. And uh, let's see how we can figure that out. Again, I recommend you use the same equation. The frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times this ratio where you place the velocity of the sound in air right there, which in this case would be 340 meters per second, and then it's going to be plus or minus the velocity of the observer, and here plus or minus the velocity of the source. Now in this case, of course, the observer is not moving, so we can go ahead and call that zero. The velocity of the source, even though the source is moving to the left, we're not going to call that a negative 20, we're just going to put 20 down. The sign will be determined by what we expect is going to happen as far as will the frequency heard be higher or lower and what sign do we need there in order to accomplish that. So we'll see that in just a moment. So this is going to be 500 Hertz times the ratio. So we'll put 340 plus zero, so I'll have to write that, 340 here. We're going to put 20 there, now the sign. Okay, the source is moving away from the observer. That means every time a new wave is being put out, the wave will be farther apart, which means longer wavelengths, which means lower frequency. Again, remember, velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. So <clears throat> if the, um, the frequency is therefore going to be velocity divided by the uh, wavelength right here, and if the wavelength gets bigger, that means the frequency gets smaller. All right, because that's in the denominator, so bigger denominator means smaller frequency. All right, so we're going to hear a lower frequency. That means what do we need here to make this whole thing smaller? Well, a bigger denominator will make that smaller, so we need a plus there. So regardless of the direction, we realize we need a plus. Now, if we plug the numbers in there, we get this equal to 500 hertz times the ratio of 340 divided by 360. And with a calculator, we can figure out what that is equal to. So we have 500 times 340 divided by 360, and we get... Hmm. Oh, there it is. Uh, for a moment there, I thought I had the wrong number here. Equal to 472 hertz. Okay, that's how we determine that. So again, every time we look at the situation, we realize here, cards moving away, wavelengths are going to be larger. Larger wavelengths mean shorter frequency. What sign do we need there so that this whole thing will be a smaller number? A bigger denominator means we put a plus there, and we get the right answer. And that's how we do that.